There is only one way. And we sang it this morning. Amen. John 14, 6, there's only one way. There are not many ways as a lot of people, you know, on Facebook and YouTube and all you get. There's a lot of things going around. There's so many ways you can get to God. And no, there's only one. Jesus is not the key. He's not only the door. He's the only way. God has entrusted no one else in heaven and on earth but His Son, Jesus Christ. And through the cross, you know, um, He has made things possible for us, redeemed us. Someone sent me a photo of Santa Claus and Jesus now. The difference is Santa Claus, he had his, his bag with all the luxury and all the gifts. And on the other hand, there was a photo of Jesus just a picture drawn, but Jesus carrying a cross. Yes. And Santa Claus carrying all the nice gifts that we want. So Jesus didn't come for gifts. Yes, spiritual gifts, yes. But he came to die for us. And as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, God had laid this message on my heart. The title of my sermon is Examining Yourself. Examining is very important. Every company, sometimes one, twice, thrice a year, sometimes quarterly, they have a stock-taking day, which they have to take stock of what they have, where they've been, what has, what has, what has worked for them, and what has not worked for them. Those, those that are working at companies, Maybe you're not doing the stock taking, but there is someone that's doing the stock taking. And the Bible is full of scriptures where we need to do examining. And this is the time of the year where a lot of people, um, instead of examining themselves, they continue on a path which was not really successful for them in 2023. And you get these guys, they are 11th month Christians, I don't know, not here in JCC, but maybe somewhere else. Which enjoy all the nice cool drinks, which are flavored and which are spiked and everything, and make you walk skew like a crab. But this morning, I want us to turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 15. I'm so grateful for the honor and for the privilege this morning to minister. It's always a privilege this morning to minister the word of God unto you. And I, want, I just want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a, and a prosperous new year. Enjoy what you've worked hard for in this year. If you don't have salad, say thank you, Lord. Sister Jasmine, if you don't have that corn tongue, thank you, Lord. <laughs> if you don't have the gammon, thank you, Lord. I'm still alive. There's a lot of people that planned for this day that didn't see it. But we are still alive. We've made it. And I'm so grateful for that. Matthew 15. I'm going to read from verse 8. It says, These people honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by man. Now I want us to go to just the first, just the, the verse before the verse 8 is verse 7. It says, you hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. Now let's go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 29 verse 13. Isaiah 29 verse 13. We trust, we trust God. We're not going to be that long. We're going to try it and keep it as you know, sweet and short, but in the Lord. Wow. 
the Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship of me, their worship of me is made up only of rules taught by man. Ezekiel 33, Ezekiel 33 verse 31. It is very strange that in the Old Testament, a lot of people don't know that Jesus was in the Old Testament. And what Isaiah and Ezekiel, as we're going to read now, Old Testament prophets, what they prophesied, Jesus confirmed in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, Jesus was concealed, but in the New Testament, Jesus is revealed. He was already in the Old Testament, but we didn't hear of him, we didn't see him. But in the New Testament, he is born. And he is confirming what has been prophesied hundreds of years ago. Ezekiel 33 verse 31, it reads as follows, My people come to you as they usually do. Now just listen to the wording, family. I'm reading from a Thompson Chain reference Bible, so it might differ from yours. My people come to you as they usually do and sit before you to listen to your words, but they do not put them into practice. With their mouths, they express devotion. But their hearts are greedy for just gain. Now it is very strange that family that you found the same text in the Old Testament twice. And in the New Testament, Jesus came and he is just confirming what has been prophesied in the Old Testament. And this, is, and this is the thing, families, that we need, to, we need to look and do some introspection in ourselves and check our walk with Christ. How far did we come? Did we learn the extra scripture? Did we, did, we, did we grow in Christ? Are we still drinking the milk? Is there improvement in our lives? Because growth is important. I'm looking at, you know, there's Malachi. Malachi was a baby. But now, he is not a baby, a baby anymore. He is walking now. There's growth. There must be growth, family, in our lives. And if there's no growth in your life, and the thing is, we need to do introspection in ourselves. Paul, when he write to the Corinthian church, in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 28, at the communion table, because there was a lot of fighting in Corinth. There was a lot of, um, they, they, they did not love one another. They, they did some strange thing. They took each other to court. And at that time, they didn't have like, we have now, we have a, co a court that is enclosed and everything. No. They had some open door. I let open their courts up. So now they took their, their brother and their sister to court. So all these things. And Paul says, we need to examine ourselves. Now, for those that don't know, I like plants. I like plants. I like gardening. I like succulents in particular. And what I've seen is with a lot of plants, is that what hinders, many a times, what hinders the growth of a plant is weeds. Weeds soak the plant. Weeds not only choke the plant, but if that weed is not being pulled out or being taken care of, it can kill that plant. And Jesus come and he say, you worship me with your, with your mouths and with your lips. But he says, but your hearts are far from me. Now the heart often refers to someone's emotion. And sometimes we, we say, you know, that person is heartless or that person doesn't have a heart or that person has a heart of stone. Why? It's because that person doesn't show emotion. 
And it often relates to the heart even when it comes to giving. It is a heart thing, family. It is a heart condition. And the same church in Corinth, Paul, when he speaks to them, he says, and God loves a cheerful giver. It is the heart behind the hand. Amen. It is the heart behind the hand that gives. And I always say this, a legal giver gives because he has to. But a loving giver gives because he loves to. There's a big difference. I don't serve God under compulsion. I don't serve God because I was forced by my mom to serve God. No, I serve God because what he has done and provided for me on the cross. I don't worry about Santa Claus. Family. <laughs> Christ didn't come for that. A lot of people waited, a lot of, we teased the children, Santa Claus is coming through the chimney. There's even a song that says, Santa Claus got stuck in my chimney. <laughs> when he came last year. <laughs> because Santa, of all the switches, gone a bit fat. But Christmas, we should teach the children, is about Christ. He came, not Santa Claus. Santa Claus is not important. And sometimes, you know, we miss what God wants to do for us because of the worldly things. And right through the year, and this is what I want us to just think about. What have you done for this year for God? Because in the scripture that we've read, it says we come as we usually do. We listen to the words of God, but there's no change. There's no growth. Nothing happening in our lives. Why? Because of our hearts. And there's a scripture in, in Proverbs 4.23, if we can go there. It's a very uh, well-known portion of scripture. Proverbs 4 verse 23. It says, above all else, guard your heart. For it is the wellspring of life. Guard your heart. Why guard your heart? Because that is where a lot of things happen. That is where a lot of reasoning happen. You speak out of the abundance of the, of the heart. And so the Afrikaans are saying, goes, what the heart will fall us? As it to say was that. What the heart will fall us, and this elder. What the heart will fall us. Go here. And Jesus, you know, one of the most important parables, and if you can, if there's a parable family that I want you to just go and study and look at. It is the parable of the sower. Jesus said it is important. And if it is important that Jesus taught on the parable of the sower and he even gave them an illustration and he gave the revelation of the parable of the sower. And he talked about four soils. And you know, he compared the four soils to four types of different hearts. If you can put it in that way. And as it goes, the sower sows. It's a hard condition. Rocky ground, stony ground, just by the pathway. It is a hard condition. And weeds can kill us. Weeds can choke us. And Jesus speaking to the, to the Pharisees who is who is so firm on the law and on the old covenant things. They could not see the new covenant, the better promises, the new things Christ has brought in. So that we can grow in life. And for them, 
that are confessing the law and teaching the law, they did not stick to the law. They themselves did not keep to the law. When God means your heart are for me, are from me, good means we have chosen other loyalties besides God. So in other words, if our hearts are not fully on God, then our heart is somewhere else. And the Bible is very clear in the book of Matthew. Where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. And this is where it gets tough, family. Because we need to see, is my heart at the right place? Because I can come to church, I can look good, I can have my makeup on, but maybe inside. Even Paul, when he's, when he's writing a letter to Timothy, he says, it's people that has the form. There is the form. You can see the person. It is just the form. But no power, nothing. In Afrikaans, a gedaante van God sale. It's just a skeleton, but there's nothing there. Coming to church every day, day in and day out, but no growth. You worship me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. We need to see and check ourselves this morning. Is it about the pastor? Is it about the prophet? Is it about your mom? Is it about your dad? Is it about my studies? All these things are important. But Christ first. God wants to be first. And there's a saying that says, if God is your co-driver, change seats. God cannot be your co-driver. He don't want to be your co-driver. He will be in that side as long as you keep him there. And you will see things going, you know, away from you. You will see blessings going past you. You will see that you won't reach where you want to reach. It's because you're taking charge of the wheel. You want to do things out of the flesh and out of your own ways. And you fail every time. Because if you do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result, you're going to have a big problem. But if you switch seats and check your heart this morning, are you doing me a favor? No. Are you doing your mommy a favor? No. What has God done for you in this year? Maybe you've passed the exam. For the matriculants that are waiting, spending a lot of hours, are we willing, are we willing the time, the amount of time we study, are we willing to put that same hours in for Christ? And sometimes in a, at the person's actions, you can see where their hearts are. Your action will tell you and show you where your heart is. I've looked into my own life and I know there's a lot of things that I need to work on in my own life and everyone should do that. If you think, you know, I've made it and, you know, I don't need the word and I don't need this and I don't need that, check your heart. Examine yourself. If you feel you know too much, check your heart. There's a saying that goes, a lot of people, if they're not full of God, there's a chance that you could be full of yourself. And it's about our hearts. And that is why I say, we come and we do not receive. And a lot of people, they question God. 
Why aren't things happening to me? Check your heart. Examine. Check. God, you know, I've, I look at my, I look at, you know, my petrol, what I, what I give out a month. I need to check you. But how, the, how come I spend 1,000 here? There must be a, a snake somewhere here in my finances. We have to check. You need to, you need to examine your budget. Somewhere, something is wrong in your life. If you, if you are accident prone and things are happening to you all the time, you need to take stock. You need to sit still and you need to examine and re-look at things. And I've seen people coming to me and asking me questions regarding their own life. And then I give them the answer. And I can see now, it's not, they're not taking this answer. Because application is very important. They're not listening to the advice. Because they have a made up mind. It is a hard condition family. And if there's one thing that God is high on, it is the heart. It is the heart. The heart in the body, he pumps the blood to every cell, to every organ in the body. He pumps, he works tirelessly. Let's go to 2 Timothy. I'm almost done, family. There's not a lot of amens this morning and it's not maybe a, a Christmas message about the crib and the manger and all these things. But what I'm giving you today is gold. Because you know what? It is the word of God. It's not me. I'm giving you all the scripture family so you can see this is not from Pastor Desmond. It is God speaking. Amen. Thanks for the amen. I'm also hungry family. What's the weight guys please? What's the weight? For the diabetics, the insulin, and the, and the metformin, and the glycoside. What's out? What's out? Vaselino? Second Timothy 3. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will love us, be lovers of money, lovers of themselves and lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of God, treacherous, rash, conceited lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Listen to this. Have nothing to do with them. Distance yourself from people that are like that. All that whole list. And maybe you have one of those. It can be corrected. It can be removed. All the weeds must be taken out. They must be cleaning. And people clean normally most the end of the year. They take out all the junk. And they take out all the old things. And they dust all the spider webs and everything. But you know what? It should be done regularly. Yeah. Not at the end of the year. <laughs> Amen, Majini? Yeah. It should be done regularly. And I'm not, I'm not going to come to do inspection, no. You must do inspection in your life. You must do inspection in your own life. I'm not going to say do this, do that, do that because I've got things in my own home and in my life that I need to focus on. But God looks at the heart. And now even when God elected uh, David as, as king, when, 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 when Samuel, the prophet Samuel, brought all David's Brothers before his, his, his father, Jesse. God told Samuel, don't look at the outward appearance. 
I look at the heart. Why? Because that is where the real person is. That is where the real Desmond is. Is the heart. If you want to see your Christian on fire, you will see it in his walk. If you want to see someone that's loving God, he will constantly speak about God. His life revolves around God. God is the center. And his son paid the price on, on the cross of Calvary. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And while we, we, we might sound religious, we might use the phrases when people talk to us, Lucy. How are you? No, I'm blessed. Man of God, I'm blessed, but empty. Nothing. There's no power. Nothing. No, man of God. Oh, prophet, how are you doing, apostle? Apostolic anointing. Oh, I've got a gift of miracle. But you know what? When last we in church, you know, no, I don't belong to a church. The Bible says, don't have anything to do with them. Yes. Cut yourself. Yes. It is the heart family. God is looking for commitment. Not just empty words. Because in James, the Bible says that the tongue, he can say anything. There was a guy that came here was part of the church for, for a couple of months and he used to talk and when we say we're going to do this it, oh, you know what we can do this and we're going to do that and we're going to do that and in five minutes the job is finished talking <laughs> talking talk is talk is cheap family excellent God is looking for excellent from the heart even in the factory, you get a, a person that's doing examining. You get a person that's examining. That person only examines. Yeah. Is there cotton? Is there problems? Where is, the, is, it in, is it in line? I work for a, a, a sock, a, 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 you know, a factory, you know, and, and they used to, you know, manufacture the socks. And I was a nutter. That was my position there. But you get a QC. We check for the quality. Because if the quality is not right, we can't send it to the shops. No one wants to buy a can of baked beans which has a dent in. <laughs> you would move to the other, to the other tin that is well. Family, God loves us. But it's our hearts. That God is worried about this morning. And while we may focus on the gifts and all the nice things and the trimmings and, and you know, and what we've achieved in life. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for what God has done for me. You know, I'm, I'm grateful. But I need to check my heart. Because sometimes when you've grown and now you, you, you suddenly uh, you've got a BA degree or you've got honors or even like our doctor here says, you know, is, it can easily... Go here. I need to check. Now if you know me, you can't talk to me. I've got a degree. No. I'm too holy. You can't touch me. It's all about me. It mustn't go here. The heart must go to God. See, Mr. Swagger, they sing the song, If I am ever anything, all the praise to Him I bring. Must go to Christ. I want to end off with a statement by Kyle Eidelman. He says, we love others best when we love God the most. We love others best when we love God the most. 
It's not just about us family. We've got a brother and our sister. And that is why Christ came to reconcile. To bring back, to restore what was lost by the first Adam. He restored. He restored the connection. He brought us back to God. That relations of that frame that we had before. And we're sitting here and you're wondering, what is this about the heart? You will realize as you grow on, where am I going to? Where is my heart on? What am I more focused on? And I want us to think of where our focus is right now and where our focus should be. It should be on Christ. You can have all the finances, you can have the nicest car, you can have your, yourself sorted out with your studies, but if your heart is far from God, you need to get back in alignment with God. And we're sitting here this morning and you, you say, brother, I've, somehow I've lost direction. Somehow I've lost my way. Somehow my focus was more on the things of the world than on God. My focus was more on family. My focus was more on, on my job. My focus was more on other things other than the work of God. Maybe your focus could be on the work of God, but it could be not on God. Some people are so busy with the things of God. I look at myself, I'm all over the show. I'm running here and I'm driving here and I'm driving there. Busy with the things of God, but there's a difference. I could be not busy with God, but I'm busy with His things, but not with Him. And that is where... Where Martha and Mary, where the difference come because the one chose the feet of Jesus. And that is where God wants us to be. We need to examine ourselves.